Hi everyone, it's Natalie and welcome back to my channel. I always want to call this book the Mary Shelley Book Club because that just makes more sense in my brain. <laughs> But today I'm going to be reviewing the Mary Shelley Club as part of the book tour hosted by Colored Pages. So I would like to thank Colored Pages and the publisher for sending me an e-arc of this book. So let me read to y'all the summary of this book. New girl Rachel Chavez is eager to make a fresh start at Manchester Prep, but as one of the few scholarship kids, Rachel struggles to fit in. And when she gets caught up in a prank gone Ari, she ends up with more enemies than friends. To her surprise, however, the prank attracts the attention of the Mary Shelley Club, a secret club of students with one objective, come up with the scariest prank to orchestrate real fear. But as the pranks escalate, the competition turns cutthroat and takes a life of its own. When the tables are turned and someone targets it's the club itself, Rachel must track down the real-life monster in their midst, even if it means finally confronting the dark secrets from her past. I rate this book 3.5 stars. Now, don't let that deter you because genuinely I had a lot of fun reading this book. This book is very, very gripping. I definitely think it's a page turner. From the very, very start, I was engaged in the story. I was interested in what was going on. I was honestly the most engaged I've been in a book that isn't a romance in a while. Because honestly, most of the time I can speed through a book very quickly when it's a romance, but with any other genre, I struggle a lot to really be consumed by the story. And this did that very, very easily. Although I wouldn't say that the majority of it is super fast paced because I don't think it has a very rapid pace. It certainly always has something going on that keeps your attention. So I think in a very subtle but also very clever way, it keeps you interested in what's going on without making you feel like there needs to be something big and terrifying going on on each page. I do think it has those moments where it kind of gives you those small scares and it kind of lifts up the tension and releases it in a nice way and then it just keeps building and building and building the tension in a way that leads to the final resolution really well. Something else that I liked about this book is the humor in it. It had a lot of passages that were very, very, very funny. From very early on, I was highlighting passages in orange, which is my annotation color for funny moments, because I really do like the author's humor. As someone who is new to horror, but kind of enjoys it, but has very particular likes when it comes to horror. I definitely enjoyed this because it had the humor, not exactly like in Scream, but that reminded me of it. And so being able to make those parallel connections made this a far more enjoyable experience. So overall, the humor definitely made this a very enjoyable read for me. Now, as always, the characters are where it's at for me in any reading experience. And this book certainly delivered on that front. Our main character, Rachel, was a superb lead for this book. I really enjoyed that we were following this character that was trying to get her agency back. So much of this book is about Rachel trying to take control of her life. After she goes through a traumatic experience, she just wants to to live her life like she doesn't have to be afraid all the time. It's why she started getting into scary movies because she feels like if she watches enough of them, she will stop being so afraid. And so that coping mechanism turns even worse when she joins the Mary Shelley Club because even though she now is the, the perpetrator basically of fear, she is the one causing fear in others, There, there's a slippery slope there that when she starts realizing she's on it, she starts questioning, why am I so invested in this club? Why do I so badly want to cause others fear as a way to compensate for my own fear? So that was great. Rachel was fantastic and a fantastic lead. 
Rachel's best friend, Sandra, is also a really enjoyable character. She is kind of the complete opposite of Rachel and that makes their dynamic fun because Sandra is very talkative, she's always chatting, she always knows what's going on in the school, like the rumor mill, like she's in that rumor mill, she knows everything. And it's great because she, she sees the strangeness in Rachel and doesn't criticize it, doesn't think it's all that strange. She still stays with Rachel and she still basically sticks by her side and trusts her. And so their dynamic was just very wholesome and sweet. And so that's why I liked it. That's why I liked Sandra. She was a super chill character and I think a character this story needed in order to balance out the more tense moments and to create this very real thing of how life is not constantly horror or constantly just being an average teen and so Sandra was that bridge of making Rachel still have a teen experience a normal <laughs> teen experience while at the same time having this more abnormal teen experience with the Mary Shelley Club. Speaking of the Mary Shelley Club, Bram Felicity, Freddy, Thayer, they were all kind of awesome <laughs> in their own way. I really liked them. Thayer was for sure one of my favorites because he was a very energetic character. He had, he's one of those characters that makes me feel like if he were a real person, he'd be the kind of person that you can barely restrain from jumping off the walls because he's so full of energy and he's just so funny and nice and he tries to keep things lighthearted. And so that's kind of why I liked him in this club, in the club dynamic. I really, really enjoyed Thayer because yeah, he was not exactly the comic relief because like I said, there's just a lot of humor all throughout the book but he was definitely the the light tone in this club in particular and that's why I loved him because I just gravitated towards those characters and so his interactions with Rachel were very very sweet and nice I really was a big fan of the scenes where they were not spending time with the Mary Shelley Club, where, where they were just working together. I thought those interactions were very wholesome, just wholesome, and so I liked them. Felicity, on the other hand, was just an icon, pure icon vibes. We love her, we love her character design, we love how she interacted with the world. The girl was wild. <laughs> she was wild and I loved it. She was definitely the oddball in the group and I was into it. And even though there was kind of animosity between Rachel and Felicity as the two girls in the Mary Shelley Club, it never felt like just straight up girl hate or anything like that. If anything, there was a little bit of girl hate going on with Rachel and Lux, but that was actually a more complex dynamic and went way beyond just the like popular girl versus the weird new girl. So that, again was its own thing. So the interactions between Rachel and Felicity were interesting because it was definitely like they were trying to show off. They were trying to one up one another and so I like that. I like tension in relationships. I think it makes things interesting and compelling. <sighs> Okay, okay, so I left Bram and Freddy for last on purpose <laughs> because they, oh my gosh, <laughs> they, they were like two sides of the same coin. Both of them I did not trust from the very start. Both of them were sketchy as hell from the start. I wanted to trust them, but I also didn't want to trust them. I loved them, but I also kind of hated them. They both had so much that made them interesting on their own, but that also made it so that you were kind of with Rachel in this uncertainty of like, can I trust either of these boys? Are they telling the whole truth? What are they hiding? So like, honestly, even though this did have kind of like love triangle vibes, not completely, 
completely, not entirely. It didn't 100% commit to that because Bram had a girlfriend. So it didn't 100% commit to the love triangle. But even though the vibes were there, I enjoyed them because neither Bram nor Freddie, I could be sure I could trust that they were telling Rachel the truth, that they were being genuine with her. With Bram, we have that he's very standoffish. He's very, very cold and only with slight sprinkles of warmness, like not even hot and cold, <laughs> sprinkles of warmness. And so he has these interactions with Rachel that you're kind of like, this guy's a jerk, but I'm also kind of interested in why. <laughs> And then with Freddie, you had this thing where he was very charming, very nice, very sweet, but then he kind of let things happen that you were like, why doesn't he just stand in Rachel's corner? Why does he stick to the rules so much? And then why does Bram keep saying bad things about him even though he's only ever been nice to Rachel? So we have both of these characters that are acting very strange and you're kind of like, can I trust them? <laughs> can I? So honestly, it was great. Even though it played mind games with me, <laughs> it was great. I loved Bram and Freddy and the conflict they created within me. <laughs> so if I have a con to mention to this book here, it would be that it reads kind of outdated. It makes certain music references that I'm kind of like, why would it teen nowadays be listening to that? Why would they care about that? So that would be the only thing. Like sometimes the teenage speak just didn't feel legit. I, and I just sometimes felt like I was in a different time because it did not compute to me why they would listen to certain music or why they would say certain things. But other than that, honestly, solid book. Finally, what I enjoyed about this book is that we follow Rachel, a working class kid, in this very high-end rich kid school. And so we have those very clear dichotomies of her feeling kind of out of place because she hasn't grown up with all this money, with all these resources, and everyone around her is kind of alien because of it. But to some extent, the Mary Shelley Club is an equalizer because Except for Freddie and her, the rest of the club members are rich, but since they all love horror movies so much, that kind of brings them together and it makes them come together for a common goal and on common ground, more or less. But at the same time, as things start getting darker, you start seeing how they're not on equal footing at the end of the day because of their economic disparity between them. So overall, I love that this included that conversation in here on privilege and wealth and how you navigate spaces that are so different from what you grew up in. So yeah, that's about it for my non-spoilery thoughts. If you want to know why I gave this book 3.5 stars, you'll have to wait for my spoiler review that will come out after the book is released in April. But please know that I highly recommend this book. I really, really had so much fun reading it. And honestly, I would tell you my full thoughts if it didn't delve into spoilers because I really did enjoy my reading experience with this book. I think if you enjoy horror that is meta, very self-aware, you're going to find this a very enjoyable read. So go check it out. So yeah, that's about it for this spoiler-free review. If you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. If you would like to follow me on any of my social media, I will have the links to that down below in the description. But for now, see you next time.